So welcome to our webinar. I'm Dr. Rita McGuire. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Wakana, as well as one of the co-founders. And honestly, tonight we're going to be talking about two autoimmune diseases, and that's lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. And I bet you're wondering, why did I pick lupus and rheumatoid arthritis in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, right? That's truly what so many of us on this webinar are very anxious about. We're losing sleep about. We may have had loved ones that have been very sick or even passed away or friends and family members. But the reason why I chose lupus and rheumatoid arthritis was because the other day I was doing a three-way call with one of my business partners, Gerald West, and we were talking to a woman that has lupus and she's being challenged with the fact that she cannot get her medications. One of the medications that they're using for very severely ill COVID-19 patients is the same medications that patients that have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis use. And that name of that medication is Plaquenil. Many of you've heard of hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine or Plaquenil, these drugs are now, there's a shortage. And those folks that have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, honestly, a lot of them are frankly out of luck in getting their medication. So I thought that it was imperative to talk about how we can assist those who have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis as they are going through this pandemic, as we all are, and having a holistic, organic, more natural way of assisting in some of the symptoms that they're challenged with. So of course, we can't make any claims, we can't make any diagnosis, we can't make any treatment, but what we can do is really empower folks who suffer from lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and really teach them about how the cannabis plant can be of assistance. So tonight, I am bringing on one of my business partners, um, and she is a very knowledgeable person, not only because she's a nurse, but because she is a lupus uh, patient. She's very uh, active with the association board of the Lupus Society in Illinois, and her name is LaShawn Gorello. She is a transitional care nurse and social work. She works in the community. She works for Rush University Medical Center. She's also an inpatient surgical nurse at Elmhurst Memorial Hospital where she specializes in ortho and neuro post-operative care. Ms. Gorello has also been a registered nurse for 23 years. She attended the College of DuPage and Purdue University, and ever since she has developed a strong clinical background, including experience with inpatient surgical nursing on the ortho, neuro, and spine units. She's also had experience in the home health care nursing as well as transitional care nursing. Currently, she facilitates the lupus support group at Rush University and serves on the associate board of Lupus Society of Illinois. So I want to introduce to you Nurse LaShawn Gorello. Are you out there? I am here. Thank you, Dr. Rita. Thank you for that warm welcome. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, thank you so much. I want to just say that bio is a little outdated. I, I did neglect to add, uh, I am a member of Lambda Sigma Sigma, which is a lupus sorority that was started here in Chicago. And I'm sure we have a bunch of them on the call tonight. Um, so to everyone, I would just like to say, you know, my um, career in nursing is about 20 I want to say 23 years and half of those years about I've been diagnosed with lupus. Um, I was diagnosed around 2010. And um, as you all know, or some may not know, but lupus is very insipidus. It is a very um, progressive um, disease that 
There is no cure, uh, but can be managed with treatment options. And as Dr. Rita just mentioned, one treatment option that uh, most of us have relied on for our maintenance uh, drug of choice, the Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine has been on back order for a lot of patients. Um, I want to start by saying a lot of you know lupus affects many organs within the body. And so I'm not surprised that this is a topic for tonight. Uh, myself, I have lupus pneumonitis. And what that means is the lining of my lung when I uh, get severely flared up, uh, meaning active with the disease. We have, you know, our remission or um, stable periods, and then we have our active flared up uh, active disease periods. So when I'm really bad, I have um, lung involvement. Lupus can affect the lung, the heart, the kidney, the skin, the hair, the joints, the skin. Every major organ in the body can be affected um, with lupus. Most of us share, although our symptoms may, you know, be different, our um, organs involved may be different, we usually share the commonalities of inflammation, pain, sleep disturbance, anxiety slash depression slash chronic fatigue. I say those three together because they often exist in a little circle where one feeds the other. Depression, chronic fatigue, uh, anxiety, you know, you don't know which one started first, but they kind of trail each other and help trigger that pain to cycle up. So all that to say, um, about a year, well, maybe last fall in 2019, um, I have a friend, a colleague, a business associate, and my upline, Robin Tillman, um, she asked me if I had ever um, tried CBD in general. And to be honest with you, at that time, I didn't know a lot about it. I attended a um, event to learn more about it. And then subsequently, a short time after that, started using a CBD tincture. A tincture is uh, drops that you, you put under the tongue and hold for 60 seconds to, to let it uh, absorb within the body. By going under the tongue, it absorbs right above the neck into the uh, blood vessels that go, you know, up to the brain. So I started that for two reasons. Number one, when I had pain previously, I would use um, different pain medications, not infrequently, but frequently enough that it was causing me some side effects, Norco, Percocet. Um, I, I had taken one Flexeril, also known as um, cyclobenzaprine, once, a 10 milligram tablet put me out for three days. I am over 200 pounds and that one 10 milligram Flexeril pill put me out for three days. I was, I was discombobulated, woozy, drowsy. I would only wake up long enough to go to the bathroom and then lay back down because I, I, it, it just completely, the side effects were just, I, I just can't understand how people could take two or three of these a day and function. And here I was taking one my first time and my doctor had prescribed it for joint and muscle pain in my lower extremities. And I, about the third day when I came out of my coma, I called him and I said, doc, I can't, I can't, this is too strong for me. So then he says, okay, let's try the Percocet. Okay, but then with that, I can't drive. I can't go to work. I had side effects of severe nausea. Um, my GI system just got all discombobulated, but I, I felt at that time I had no options. So as I further educated myself, and this has been on and off for 10 years, mind you, with these um, medications, only one time with the Flexeril. After that, I was done. So then it was the other medications, the opioids. Over the last 10 years, I've been hospitalized at least once a year for a flare up that costs at least at least a three day to three to five day is a typical inpatient stay for me with flare up. Now I do have what I call mini flare ups where I can manage it at home with medication. But when I get severe enough where my breathing is impaired because my lungs, my um, lining of my lung is 
you know, inflamed, then I can't breathe. I'm using six, seven pillows to, to sleep upright. And then I, I really have to go to the hospital at that point. The hospital is a dangerous place for people like me, people like you, because our immune systems are overactive and we're, we're already ready to kind of fight off anything. So a common cold, me being around someone with a, just a basic common cold can send me to that level. So imagine me being exposed to someone with a COVID-19, a corona, CO2 or V or whatever the, the letters are, that can, that can be deadly for me if it could be deadly for you. On the news, we hear about these pre-existing conditions. We hear about the elderly. We hear about people with diabetes, heart disease. We hear about people with asthma. We do not hear about people with lupus. We do not hear about people with rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know why we should, but then that goes back to the awareness. There's not enough awareness around these autoimmune illnesses, disorders, diseases, however you want to term it. So Dr. Rita is asking us, why do, why do we think she's bringing this topic into light? Not only is it related to the scarce medication right now, but it's also due to the fact that these viruses and germs are deadly to our, our immune systems right now. And so for myself, I had to not way before COVID-19, but due to the side effect of pain medication mostly, it's very hard to be a nurse and work a 12 hour shift. You cannot medicate yourself with a, with a narcotic pill and then a Tylenol is not covering it enough, but then you, you have to be worrying about your other organs in your body would take it too much of anything. So imagine getting through my day with a pain of a seven out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, and then you barely making it home. I have to call one of my kids to meet me out in the garage to help get me out of the car because now my joints have locked up, my muscles have completely stopped working below my waist to where I can't move because I've put everything into finishing that 12 hour shift. And it's, it is easy for people to say, well, go on disability, stop working. That's, that's not the reality of my world right now. I would like to work like most of you, you wanna work as long as you can. So when my friend and mentor and upline Robin suggested maybe learning more about CBD and seeking that as an, as an adjunct to my current therapy being mainly the Plaquenil and the mycophenolate, those drugs to keep my um, immune system kind of balanced, I thought, why not? Because the, the opioids wasn't cutting it because the side effects were too detrimental to me. And then they were causing me to lose time time from work because I can't drive, time from work because I'm nauseated, time from my family because I'm too drowsy to participate in activities. So for the last, uh, let's see, from October, November to now, I have uh, steadily been using um, certain products, mostly the gummies, um, per, and I should say per meaning no THC because I'm in healthcare, I wanna just be cognizant of using products that have THC in it, just in case, you know, if there's some accident at work or mishap with a patient, the first thing they want to do is send you to the lab and check you for alcohol, drug screening, and things like that. So I'm very careful and cautious about what I take. So with the Wakana line and the products, you know, there there's a variety and choices that I have. And so I'll get into those a little bit later. But I will say that to bring that conversation up with my physician, it actually was him who brought it up. He noticed that as I did my revisit with him, he noticed that I wasn't asking for refills on my pain medication. And he said to me at one visit, he said, LaShawn, we haven't, we haven't refilled your pain medicine in over six months. I, I, he says, you can't be going to another provider for pain medication. I says, no doc, I've, I've been trying CBD and so I've been okay. I haven't used any opioids since I last saw you. And he says, really? I says, yes. He says, well, let me give you a script just in case. So you have something on hand in case you, you get into a flourish mode and you know you can't get in to see me. He says, because I would have to link a prescription with a visit nowadays with the drug uh, regulations and DEA and all that. I says, okay, doc, I'll take the script. But I don't know if I'm going to fill it. 
he says, well, that's up to you, but I will give it to you because I don't want that call that you're in pain at 3 a.m. and there's nothing I can do for you. So needless to say, I've had the script for, I mean, it's old now. Um, he gave me a call Monday just to say the COVID-19 is really bad on the surgical unit. They turned the surg surgical unit into a COVID unit. He wanted to make sure that with my lupus pneumonitis that I stayed clear of that unit and that I was working in a safer place, which I do the command center and then I do the transitional care rush. So I'm in a safe, I'm in safe, you know, locations as far as reducing my risk for exposure while still, while still, you know, doing patient care. Um, he asked me how my pain was. I says, well, doc, I'm still doing the CBD. I haven't, you know, filled those prescriptions that you gave me. He says, well, they're kind of old now. Let me send some new ones to your pharmacy because this was from last year. I says, well, no, I think I'm okay. He says, well, no, let me just send over 30 tablets just in case. He says, because I don't need you in this hospital because there's too many viruses and germs. It could be deadly for you. So even the physicians know for people with autoimmune that the hospital right now is not a place they want to see people with lupus flared up being admitted because what is the chance that you're not going to have a nurse who's caring for a COVID patient? That's, I don't think that's going to happen. So with me, myself, I'm trying to stay home and try to manage my inflammation, my pain, my anxiety, and my sleep disturbances with my CBD as an adjunct to my current Plaquenil and my mycophenolate. And of course, if, if I suggest people to if their plan is not working with them, you know, this may be, you know, an alternative measure, especially if we're experiencing situations where we have medication shortages, um, things are on back order, do we want to wait until we are unable to get what we need? I think as a community, we have to, you know, put some effort into self-advocacy but also in self-education and sharing information with each other to see what other you know products or solutions may be out there to complement our mainstream drugs for lupus autoimmune rheumatoid arthritis our cousins out there the ms the fibromyalgia all of them as well so um i can say for myself if you take medications, obviously, you know, there are some drug interactions that can occur if you take things like um, warfarin, Coumadin, um, asthma inhaler, theophylline, some HIV uh, medications, um, some chemo drugs, and some benzodiazepines, and of course, steroids. So definitely, if you consider adding some, some alternate therapies or alternate um, treatments, supplements to get the advice of your physician, check with your pharmacy about side effects or kind of do your research. I don't encourage anyone to stop taking their lupus medications at all, but I do recommend that people just be aware and educate and know that there may be some other benefits out there for you like CBD, like other products that may offer some medicinal benefits without the high of the marijuana without the high of the opioids. Outstanding, LaShawn. What a great, great share. Um, I also want you to share what you've been doing with our Power Mango Body Cream. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> getting into our products, but LaShawn was very, very creative um, because she actually ran out of our topical pain relief. You want to tell uh, our audience on the webinar what you did? And, and I'll sure. show them once I get to that slide. I'll sure. remind them what you were talking about. Okay, so Wakana has a topical um, ointment for pain relief. And I, I actually, back in March, I think, had a... Um, like a launch party to to start my business up and so i sold all those but i thought i had one and then i forgot i had given it to someone and i was having some joint pain on my left ankle and it was really bad one night that i i couldn't sleep but i didn't have anything to rub on it per se and 
I had the prescription that the doctor gave me, of course, and then I had some old meds, old pain meds from before. But I was like, well, no, because the CBD has been working. I just didn't have this topical. I remember mentioning it to Robin Tillman, and she says, well, just try rubbing some on that spot and see if that helps. And she said it kind of like, not, you know, like she was upset, but I know she had invited me to a few things around that time and I didn't go. And as you know, with lupus, we kind of have our ins and outs with activities based on how we're feeling. So that night around 3 a.m., 2 a.m., something like that, I got up and I got my Power Mingle body cream. That is a um, like a body lotion that what kind of has. And I, I actually bought it to to try it out and give it the test run because I don't like to recommend things that I haven't tried for myself. I have a daughter with eczema. I have another daughter who was diagnosed with discoid lupus, which is the skin involvement of lupus. And then I also get rashes when I'm exposed to sun. So um, I took the um, mango power uh, lotion and I just put like a like two pea sizes of squirts in my hand. And I then I put a couple of drops of um, the tincture. And I've used, used both. I've used actually the nano hempranium and um, the power um, um, oils. And I put like, I think I did four to five drops and, and mixed it with the lotion and rubbed it on the ankle. And then I laid back down. And I slept nice within, um, I remember my, I have a physical therapist daughter who's in school for PT, physical therapy. And she says, mommy, do you need an ice pack or a heat pack or something? I says, no, I'm going to try this rub right here. She says, okay, I'm going to come check, check back and see if you need me to get it. And she said, when she came back, I was like knocked out. Like I was, <laughs> I was sleeping and peaceful. So she didn't even bother me about putting the ice pack on my ankle. So that's my backup go-to remedy for like knee pain, joint pain, um, and walking. I'll, I'll, I'll do that before I go for, uh, you know, I'm trying to lose weight. So I've been walking two miles, weather permitting, of course, and I'll rub that pre-walk on my um, hip that hurts occasionally as I age, you know, the arthritis kicks in. So I rub that on certain areas before the walk. And that seems to help me. It helps me stay comfortable. That walk is not as uncomfortable as it was before. I would say before it might, you might get me up to like a six on my way back. I'm kind of limping on that last two blocks, getting back to the house. So now I can make that walk. I'm not limping back. I can walk straight back. You know, and I won't say I don't feel something. I'm a little discomfort, you know, little discomfort. So I would rate that like a two, three versus a six. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Awesome, wonderful. So you made your own little, your own little own with our Power Mango Lotion with the Hempranium 500 tincture, um, okay. and using it for topical relief. I love it. So last thing, I just want to um, let you just let those on the line, because there could be some folks on the line before I get into my part that are having some issues getting their medications. You just want to let everyone know how you've been out there advocating and helping folks to get their Plaquenil? Sure. So um, there is a, a petition on the Lupus, um, uh, Lupus Society of Illinois website. It is a petition to the governor to ask him to, um, and, and we have 2,000 signatures right now. We need 500 before we can submit it. So that is on the uh, website at Lupus Society of Illinois. And that petition requests that these medications, the chloroquine and the hydroxychloroquine, be made available for lupus patients first. So that's um, what that one thing is first. Now, for patients that I come into contact through my work of transitional care, um, I advise them if they are running low, don't wait until they have like a couple of days worse to go ahead now and request refills now because they know they're going to run into the issue of possibly having a back order. I also suggest them checking other pharmacies outside of their local area. So we have to keep in mind, lupus affects primarily women, African-American women, women of color, 
that's Latino, that's Asian women, okay? So I tell them, check the pharmacy in another, whether that's a predominantly white neighborhood, go on the north side or short, I, I do tell them to check. And I've had a few that have found some that way. I also have suggested to a few patients to, you, the typical dose is 200, the, the tabs are 200 milligrams, but the dose, the maintenance dose daily is 400. So you're taking two tablets of 200 milligrams to equal your 400. So I've also asked patients to discuss with their rheumatologist, not the PCP, the rheumatologist holds the weight with this, this medication, with management of the lupus, that if it's, if it's tight, do, is it okay to do one pill because then you're going to extend what you have because we must remember that it takes this medication about three to four weeks to build up into your system so likewise just because you run out on Tuesday it's still going to be in your system a week or two later but to extend to have some type of coverage then you know I've suggested even that as well I also you know have um suggested to people to obviously look at the triggers that they have of what sets them off with their um, flare-ups. I mean, stress is a big uh, precipitator for lupus flares. Um, some things are out of our control, you know. Um, of course, everybody now is washing their hands. Of course, now everybody should be wearing masks when in public, um, staying away from crowds and things like that. But above that, I think now is a good time to be just eyeballing and considering and planning for alternative therapies to to be added into your care plan. Well, thank you so much, LaShawn, for all of that great information. And we appreciate you being on the front line. We appreciate you really sharing with the attendees on the webinar, your story, your testimony, and how you've incorporated Wakana CBD products with your formal treatment of um, lupus. And that is what's so important is that we understand that we can help so many folks to have a additional uh, holistic, natural part of their treatment option for lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. So thank you again. We appreciate all that you are doing. So I'm going to do my um, presentation. And again, the FDA disclaimer that these statements and products have not been approved by the FDA. If you're pregnant, nursing, on medication, please, please consult your physician prior to um, taking cannabis products. So we're going to mute out some folks here because I'm hearing some background noise. And I think I was successful at that. Wonderful. So again, I'm Dr. Rita McGuire. I'm the Chief Medical Officer. I am the pillar of health. So each Wednesday, I pick a different topic, just empowering and educating folks on how CBD can be part of their regimen. I'm still a practicing obstetrician gynecologist. I'm still doing hysterectomy, C-sections, liposuctions, tummy tucks. But I am absolutely an advocate for this plant. In fact, the governor of the state of Illinois asked me to testify for the legalization of the cannabis adult use law that we have here in Illinois. I'm also one of the uh, guest speakers uh, for the Lupus Society of Illinois. I was very excited in February to present the information about CBD to this body and they overwhelmingly were just blown away, not knowing that there's a part of the cannabis plant that they can use as a lupus patient that will give them the health benefits without the high. So let's briefly talk about the cannabis plant. It has over a hundred compounds. But the two main cannabinoids that we know about are THC, that's the one that gives you the high, the psychoactive one, the one that gives you that paranoia. And then there's CBD, cannabidiol. It's the one that is non-psychoactive. It doesn't give you a high. It doesn't make you paranoid. 
Both of these compounds, though, can come from the marijuana species or can come from the hemp species. And tonight we're going to talk about CBD that's extracted from the hemp species. Now, the hemp species is defined as containing very trace amounts of THC, 0.3% or less, and high levels of CBD. So that 0.3% will not get you high. So what is CBD? Again, it stands for cannabidiol. It's the second most common cannabinoid found in different strains of the cannabis plant. It's the most common one found in the hemp plant. I've been using CBD for the last three years in my patients in conjunction with other forms of treatment like Plaquenil. In fact, I called a prescription in for one of my patients today. And yes, the pharmacist would only allow a 28 day supply for this patient. I had to go through a lot. I had to do a um, ICD-9 code. I had to verify with the pharmacist that this was not a COVID-19 patient, that this was in fact a lupus patient. So absolutely CBD has been something that she has also put into her medicine cabinet for relief of pain and other things that we're gonna talk about that lupus and rheumatoid arthritis patients suffer from. So what are cannabinoids? We know about CBD and THC, but our, our body actually produces cannabinoids. In fact, when you were born and if you were breastfed, if you ever remember that, our body produces something called anandamide. That's one of the cannabinoids that is endogenous. Another one is 2-AG. Those are two cannabinoids our body makes, but when they get deficient, when our body gets knocked out of balance, and it gets knocked out of balance by a lot of things, by the water we're drinking, the air we're breathing, the food we're eating, sleep deprivation, stress and anxiety, gets our body knocked out of balance. So we need those extra cannabinoids like CBD. Well, here is a picture of the main one, CBD, THC, CBG, CBN, CBC. All of these cannabinoids have medicinal properties on a cellular level. But you can see here, CBD is the hero. And what we're gonna uh, pay attention to tonight is CBD's ability to reduce the function in the immune system, right? We're gonna pay close attention to autoimmune diseases tonight. So you may say, Dr. Rita, CBD reduces the function of the immune system? Well, that doesn't sound right. It also helps to reduce inflammation and pain. It also helps reduce anxiety. And it also can address other disorders like disorders of the skin. Many lupus patients have skin rashes called discoid lupus. So these are some of the things I want to focus on tonight in our conversation. So how does CBD work? How do these cannabinoids work in our body? Well, Raphael Meshulam, he's an Israeli scientist. He discovered in 1964, the endocannabinoid system. And this system is the most vital regulatory system that puts our body in balance. This system is made up of receptors that help regulate physiological and cognitive processes from anxiety to sleep, to fertility, to pain, to mood, to memory. This system keeps our body in balance. Now, the two main receptors that I want you to focus on tonight is CB1. Those are receptors found in the brain and the central nervous system and CB2. Those are receptors that are found in the immune system. That's a big word tonight, immune system and our periphery. These receptors are found in every single organ and gland in our body, but I wanna concentrate specifically on the immune system in the brain and the central nervous system. So the endocannabinoid system, like I said, it has every receptor and every organ and gland in our body, regulating things from appetite all the way to 
sleep wake cycles to movement to immune system to stress and we'll talk about how that relates to lupus so when we look at cbd balancing or putting our immune system back in balance we can see that autoimmune problems like lupus fibromyalgia rheumatoid arthritis hashimoto's thyroiditis thyroid disease even type 1 diabetes all of these autoimmune disorders happen because the body thinks that there is a foreign invader. And so the immune system is overreactive. What does CBD do? CBD, remember, it reduces the immune function. So it puts it back where the immune system should be optimally. Well, COVID-19 does the same thing. COVID-19 is actually an overreactive immune response where your body produces high fever, then it starts to affect the lung, the liver, the kidney, and all the major organs in an overreactive immune response. So that's how CBD works to put the immune system in balance. So an autoimmune disease, again, is a condition in which your immune system mistakenly attacks your body. The immune system normally when it functions normally, it guards against germs like bacteria and viruses. But when it senses these foreign invaders, it sends out an army or fighter cells to attack them. The same thing that's going on with autoimmune diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, the same response happens in COVID-19. That's why they're trying to see if these medications like Plaquenil can be of assistance. So other autoimmune diseases include Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, Addison's, alopecia, we talk about hair loss, psoriasis, skin disorders, multiple sclerosis, myasthenia gravis, narcolepsy. You can see on this list several disorders that maybe you or even family members, or even colleagues or coworkers may have. So this is the letter that LaShawn was speaking about. This is a letter that the Lupus Foundation actually wrote to the vice president, pleading with the vice president that these medications that lupus and rheumatoid arthritis patients need, please allow the COVID-19 not to have an effect on these patients getting their hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. So it's a real, real problem. So lupus, again, is a hyperactive immune system. It can attack every single organ in your body. It can attack the mouth, the lungs, the kidney, the hair, the skin, the heart, the blood, the muscles and joints. And we're going to see how CBD and the endocannabinoid system we've already talked about, there are receptors in every single organ and gland in our body that can assist these patients during this pandemic. It's estimated that one in every 200 Americans live with lupus. There is no cure, like LaShawn said, for this autoimmune disease. And there are new developments in treatment but it's a very, very painful and very debilitating disorder. And what does it do to? Inflammation. We talked about this week in, week out, right? Chronic conditions. The common denominator is what? Inflammation. It's a common denominator in obesity, in diabetes, in heart disease, in hypertension, in lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis, inflammation. So some of the symptoms, joint pain, she talked about, fever, fatigue, a butterfly rash on the face, appetite loss, and photosensitivity. So there's a lot of research on CBD. In fact, there's 20,000 peer review articles that you can look up and your, do your due diligence about CBD. There's minimal research on the effect of CBD on lupus, but 
there's a lot of research that shows that lupus, because it causes a lot of inflammation and pain, can see improvement when we use CBD. Why? Because CBD interacts with the receptors in the brain, in the central nervous system, and the immune system. So that's how CBD can be so effective. So there's some studies, again, that you can find when you do your due diligence when it talks about CBD as it relates to inflammation. In fact, CBD has been used because it has anti-inflammatory as well as analgesic properties. We know that back before um, prohibition, that pharmaceutical companies like Park Davis and Eli Lilly and Pfizer, they all use cannabis-based medicine to alleviate pain. So we're talking about a 6,000 year or more history that cannabis has been very effective. LaShawn talked about the mental impacts of lupus, the depression, the anxiety, that's even more accentuated now during this pandemic. We know that CBD has receptors on those pathways in the brain, serotonin and dopamine pathways. What does that do? What it allows for those chemicals in the brain to be released so that depression and anxiety can be lessened as well as those who have insomnia can sleep, that restorative sleep that we need, that rapid eye movement sleep. So as we move into the other rheumatoid uh, autoimmune disease, which is rheumatoid arthritis. So we're gonna talk about arthritis. The term arthritis refers to joint pain. You may know folks that have something called osteoarthritis, but specifically we're gonna talk about rheumatoid arthritis in this discussion as an autoimmune disease. Common symptoms of arthritis include joint swelling, pain, stiffness, and decreased range of motion. And there's some type of arthritis can also affect the heart, the lungs, the kidney, the skins and eyes, just like lupus. And that example is rheumatoid arthritis. And then there's something called psoriatic arthritis, which is another autoimmune disease where folks who have disorders of their skin only suffer from. So again, the immune system is hyper reactive. It starts to attack the body like it's a foreigner. And so these folks have very debilitating pain. You can see here on the far right, a lot of swelling, a lot of inflammation, and a lot of pain. Now this slide is very, very, very uh, busy. But what I want you to concentrate on are the, these things at the bottom. Interleukin-1, interleukin-18, and tumor necrotic, necrotic uh, factor. These are the same chemicals and compounds that are released in the COVID-19 patients. They release what we call a cytokine reaction where it's an over exaggeration of inflammatory cells that starts to attack the lung. Well, the same thing happens in rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. You have these chemicals that are attacking the body like it's foreign. So rheumatoid arthritis is another autoimmune disease, a very debilitating disease where Plaquenil is used. But guess what? In September of 2019, the Arthritis Foundation issues CBD guidance, a first among major patient advocacy groups. So the Arthritis Foundation became the first major patient advocacy group to issue CBD recommendations, telling some 50 million arthritic patients to look for what to look for when choosing CBD. So the group did not recommend using CBD to treat arthritis symptoms, though it noted that people with arthritis 
showed significant use of an interest for CBD. So the arthritic foundation in September of 2019 was the first patient advocacy group to say, listen, CBD absolutely can be a part of your regimen. So we know that cannabis and pain has been used for neuropathic pain, as well as pain from sciatica or pain from painful swelling and joints like we see in lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, um, mm -hmm. as well as those who have post-surgical pain. So a 2019 or 2009 study showed that cannabinoids absolutely are effective in reducing pain. Right now, most people take Tylenol or ibuprofen, and we know chronic use of those medications cause kidney and liver failure. You heard LaShawn talk about the opioids that her physician tries to write for her for pain. We know where the opioid epidemic has led us. 103 people are dying each and every day from properly prescribed medications that folks get into trouble with when they take too many opioids. So absolutely CBD not only helps with pain, but CBD helps to protect the immune system by lowering viral loads. It also has been shown not only to be an antibacterial, but an antiviral. So, so much has been found where CBD can help balance the immune system in those who have a hyperreactive uh, immune system. So chloroquine versus hydroxychloroquine versus Plaquenil, they're very similar medications with a small difference in molecular structure. These medications are usually given in an oral pill to those who have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Like LaShawn said, the usual dosage is usually 200 milligrams twice a day. Hydroxychloroquine is a lex toxic structure. I'm sure you've heard of some folks that got their hands on chloroquine and had a massive heart attack, some COVID-19 patients. So hydroxychloroquine is a less toxic structure. And it's called an immune modulating drug. So it's not an immune suppressing drug. It doesn't suppress the immune system, but it helps the immune system to behave in a more functional and natural way. So why in the heck did they pick Plaquenil or chloroquine to treat COVID-19 patients? Well, it's an unproven treatment. It's being studied. It was a very small study in China. Uh, those details were really, they didn't provide any details from China. They said maybe using Plaquenil in milder cases can shorten person's hospital stay. There was also a very small study in France. It was overinterpreted by news media outlets. There were some test tube experiments that suggested a possible reason why this might work. Um, it might work because they're thinking that the drug comes in and slows the viral replication. But Plaquenil, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, has not been proven to really be of any benefit for the COVID-19 patients. So let's move into how CBD can be used for those who have autoimmune diseases. And LaShawn said, you know, she uses the edibles, she uses the topical ointments. Uh, there is a way that you can get CBD in your system by vaping. There's tinctures. There's capsules, so there's all sorts of different ways that you can ingest and get CBD into the system. If you came on late, again, the FDA does not approve any of these statements. If you're pregnant, nursing, on medication, please consult with your physician prior to using any cannabis product. So we're going to get into our product line for the last 10 minutes. As LaShawn alluded to, we have two lines. We have a power line. That line of product is for those who are able to have that small legal amount of THC, which is 0.3% or less. That's the legal limit. 
And then we have our pure line. For those who may have random drug screens at their job, that line contains less than 0.0% of THC. Those are the products in the white label, our pure line. So our products are products you can trust. Why? Well, in 2018, when the Farm Bill was passed, that bill uh, allows, after 80 years of hemp being a Schedule I drug, after 80 years in 2018, hemp was legalized on a federal level in all 50 states. So our products are very unique. Our products are some of the most rich medicinal hemp that is fully compliant with the State Department of Agriculture regulations. Our products are industrial hemp registered, as well as our products are compliant with the Farm Bill. That 2018 Farm Bill remembers states that the products have to come from hemp and they have to contain the legal limit, which is 0.3% or less. Another thing unique to our, our company, Wakana, is we provide something called certificates of analysis. What that means is that we provide the information about what's in the bottle. So what we say is in the bottle is really in the bottle. And that's transparency. You wanna make sure that you have a product that has been double certified, like our products at Wakana are double certified. Our products are third party validated, which means that our products go through another laboratory, ISO lab, to ensure that the product is free from mold, mildew, heavy metals, and pesticides. Really important when you're dealing with those with an autoimmune disease, you never want to give them or anyone any mold, mildew, heavy metals, or pesticides in a product. So that is very important that you understand that not all CBD is made equally. So this product, our Hempranium MD, is our more therapeutic product. This is a product that's in a tincture form, an oil form, like LaShawn said. She puts it underneath her tongue, three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening. This is a product for those who may have severe lupus, severe flares, or severe rheumatoid arthritis. It's 750 milligrams of CBD in a 15 ml bottle. Our other products, uh, our Hempranium 500 milligrams. This is a product that has a proprietary formula where we have enhanced our CBD with black seed, turmeric, and peppermint. Why did we do that? Well, we understand that black seed, turmeric, and even peppermint have anti-inflammatory and antioxidative properties that actually enhance the CBD properties as well. This product is a tincture. You place it underneath your tongue twice a day, three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening. Our next product is our water soluble, a great product to infuse in beverages and food. And then our last product on the right is our Culinary Plus product. That's a product that you can use in your food, baking, cooking, or you can use it as a tincture. Just remember when you're baking and cooking, do not cook or bake over 350 degrees Fahrenheit because you don't want to lose the potency of those cannabinoids. And then this is a product that LaShawn was speaking about. She took her Power Mango Body Cream, and I must mention those who have lupus, many have skin rashes, skin disorders. They can use this amazing body cream with 500 milligrams of CBD all over their body to assist with those skin discomforts and skin rashes. She used the tincture and put a little in the body cream and used it as a topical pain relief, an amazing product. And then our CBD lube. Yes, those with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis have sexual dysfunction, issues with libido, issues with erectile dysfunction, issues with vaginal dryness. So that CBD lube will absolutely help to enhance those sexual encounters. Lupus also affects the hair. Alopecia is a very common condition that we see in those with lupus. Our Empowered Hair product 
is a CBD product, 100 milligrams, along with amazing organic essential oils that help to restore thinning hair, lost hair lines, and healthy hair for those who have lupus. And then our topical relief. This is for severe pain. This is a topical cream that offers local relief for those joints, inflammation, and swelling in those with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. I love this pain cream because it is in a base of shea butter. It easily applies to the skin and you only need a little bit. More is not better when it comes to CBD. Our other pain relief is for more mild or moderate pain relief. It is 500 milligrams, but it has, instead of eight essential oils in our severe relief, it has six organic oils along with the CBD to address inflammation. And then Dr. Rita's rub, oh my goodness, this is the liquid form. It comes with 200 milligrams of CBD, 19 essential oils, that are organic and USDA certified that again, on a local area can provide relief, just one to two drops, more is not better. Instead of taking opioids, instead of taking acetaminophen or Motrin or Aleve, this is a great um, addition to those who have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. And then there are our gummies. Our gummies are something that I personally take every single night to help me sleep. It reduces inflammation. It's great for libido. We have amazing spices that you can infuse your food with. Those with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis can get additional benefits when they're cooking with using our spices. We have pre-rolls. CBD pre-rolls is a great way to get CBD into the bloodstream very, very quickly for those acute flares, for that acute pain, for that acute anxiety. All of the symptoms that those with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis have can be addressed with a pre-roll. This is 163 milligrams of CBD. You only need one to three pulls on this CBD joint, again, with the legal limit of THC, which is 0.3%. We have vape oil cartridges. Again, I love vaping because vaping's onset of action. Along with the CBD pre-roll, the onset of action is within one to five minutes. So whenever you have those situations of lupus flare, again, this is a great way to address that instead of using opioids. And then our pure line is our, our line that contains less than 0.0% of THC. Our pure line comes into a tincture form that has an enhanced delivery system called nanotechnology. And what nanotechnology means is that the CBD molecule is made very, very tiny, a nanometer, which provides an increase in its availability to the cell. So it's 98.7% bioavailable to the cells. This tincture, again, is enhanced with black seed, turmeric, and peppermint. It enhances the anti-inflammatory properties of CBD. Three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening is a great way to start our broad spectrum pure product. And then we have the same pure product in our gummies. This special edition is 40 milligrams of CBD per gummy. The power gummies are 25 milligrams of CBD per gummy. A great way for those who have insomnia, sleep disorders, to get a great night rest. We understand that our body heals when we sleep. So there are some dosing recommendations and this slide is just to show you more is not better. The Mayo Clinic did a study and they looked at folks who have chronic severe pain and they noted that those people only needed between two and a half to 20 milligrams of CBD with or without THC. That's why I always recommend starting low and starting slow. You can always increase the dose 
within three to four days if that particular dose is not working. So the factors that really impact the effectiveness of CBD is really the concentration of the CBD, your weight. So if you are on the 250 pound or more, obviously you're gonna need more CBD than someone who weighs 125 pounds. The severity of your issue, if you're dealing with severe lupus, flares and symptoms, severe rheumatoid arthritis, you're absolutely probably gonna need more than someone who's dealing with a mild condition. And then your body chemistry, your diet. Oh my God, I can't say enough about diet. Taking inflammatory foods out of your diet. What does that mean, Dr. Rita? Taking out fried food, processed food. Food that you should be eating right now is a plant-based diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, and all of those foods that are going to build the immune system up. And then what is your tolerance to CBD? I have patients where three drops twice a day is too much for them. So they back down to three drops once a day. So it all has to do with starting low and slow and getting to that effective dosage. So what's really interesting is that CBD has been studied, uh, cannabis has been studied, They've not had one person ever overdose or OD'd on cannabis, ever. Impossible. Why? Well, because the receptors in your brain, there's these receptors in the medulla part of your brain that regulate respiration. Cannabis does not interact with those receptors. Guess what interacts with those receptors? Percocet. Vicodin, Norco, all of those opioids interact with those receptors. So if you take too many Vicodin, you will stop breathing and die. So that is the reason why we've got to get this information out to our loved ones, to our colleagues, to our family members about how CBD can absolutely be in addition to those medications that folks need that have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Properly storing your CBD, once you get your products, you need to store them in a nice cool place. You wanna avoid extreme heat, extreme cold, extreme sunlight. With our water solubles, you wanna make sure that you shake those up real good before you use them. I honestly, put my products in the refrigerator. The shelf life for our products is a year for the tincture, six months for those gummies. So there's different packages that we can offer you. We have a customer variety pack where you get a combination of our power and pure products. We have a customer pure pack for those who have random drug screens at their job, we have a personal use dispensary. Again, another great way to get our product at wholesale. This particular product uh, pack is $299. We give you $500 worth of product. And then there's something called our full crown jewel dispensary, where it's a $2,000 value for $998. So to recap, the medicinal benefits of CBD are many. We just touched on rheumatoid arthritis and lupus tonight, but the auto, other autoimmune diseases absolutely hold true, like fibromyalgia, type 1 diabetes, Hashimoto thyroiditis, other conditions like sarcoid, depression, attention deficit, medical issues and relieving pain, anxiety. Again, we can't make any claims. We can't make any diagnoses. We can't make any treatment um, promises. All that we can do is empower you with this information. Do your due diligence. Whoever invited you on the line, you wanna make sure that you get your questions answered. In fact, I'm gonna take questions now, but these again are the benefits that CBD can have on every single organ and gland in our body. 
in every single organ and gland that we talked about, how lupus can affect, which is every single organ and gland, even rheumatoid arthritis can affect the heart, the lungs, and other conditions like psoriatic uh, uh, arthritis affecting the skin. So CBD absolutely is a safer choice when we talk about different options for your wholeness and wellness if you are dealing with lupus. We want to make sure that you understand that CBD is a safer choice. We are not recommending to anyone that they stop taking their medications, but what we are recommending is that you incorporate CBD with the regimen that you are taking now so it can help decrease some of the symptoms. It can help during this pandemic time where Plaquenil, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine is very difficult to get. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna take some questions right now. You can put them in the chat area. I know we've gone over a bit, but it is so important that we hear this information and I am going to answer any questions here. I am, yes, I am at the hospital, but I am in the physician's lounge. Thankfully, there's no one in labor. The unit is quiet, so we can stay on the line as long as you want in answering your questions. One question is, how can we sign the petition for lupus medications? And uh, Dr. Joy, I will make sure that LaShawn gets you that information. Any questions? You can put it right in the chat area. Hopefully you know someone with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, type one, thyro type one diabetes, all of those autoimmune diseases, multiple sclerosis. You wanna make sure that you get this information. We'll have a recording. Whoever invited you, you want to make sure you give them a call so you can get your questions uh, answered and your products uh, ordered. When is an optimal time to take CBD after taking your regimented medicine? One hour. You want to make sure you take your medication and an hour later, you want to do your CBD. The role, how does it work? Well, I think you're talking about the CBD uh, pre-rolls. The pre-rolls uh, look like a, a joint and you light it and you take between one to three pulls is really all you need for an acute condition. I love using our CBD pre-rolls and I love using our vape cartridges for acute onset of flares, anxiety, insomnia, any acute issues that you want to address within one to five minutes. Remember, please do not smoke the entire CBD pre-roll. No one needs 163 milligrams of CBD at one time. One to three pulls is all that you need. So you can go to lupusil.org, lupusil.org to sign that petition. Dr. Rita, does, do, oh, you want me to do a session on neuropathy? Yes, absolutely. I will do a session on neuropathy as well. Neuropathy is another big debilitating issue that folks who have um, diabetes specifically or any trauma can have a neuropathy and our products work amazingly well with neuropathy. Are there any side effects with CBD and asthma inhalers? Uh, the asthma medication that there could be a drug-drug interaction is theophylline. So if you're on theophylline and you want to use CBD, no issues. You need to let your physician know because CBD may cause your theophylline level to be either increased in your bloodstream or decrease. So you wanna make sure that your physician is just checking on that 
or monitoring you a little bit more closely. So I'm not sure what inhaler you're on. If you're on a albuterol, I'm not sure you can put it in chat, but we do know that there could be some drug-drug interaction with the offline. Great questions. Wow, great job, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, LaShawn, again, you are a wealth of knowledge. Again, I, I look forward to speaking to the um, Lupus Foundation. We are, uh, because of this pandemic, we have to reschedule our big, big event for the fall. And we'll keep all of you informed because we want you all to come out. Dr. Rita, could you do a session on pancreatitis? Since this is a precursor sometimes for diabetes. Absolutely, yes, I can. I wanna make sure that I answer any questions specifically about lupus, about rheumatoid arthritis, about Plaquenil, hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine, any questions? If not, please make sure that you contact the person that invited you on this line so that you can get your products ordered, you can get your questions answered. Um, thank you for your knowledge, my pleasure. This has been a great, great informative uh, webinar because I thought it was important that you know that people who have autoimmune diseases, absolutely the time is now to expose them to this information about CBD and how cannabidiol absolutely can help with a lot of their symptoms as they are dealing with this pandemic, dealing with a shortage of their medication that they absolutely need. And we've heard from LaShawn, who has been involved in helping those with the shortage, but more importantly, she's been involved with having CBD be a part of her regimen and helping with pain and helping with insomnia and helping with skin rashes and helping with anxiety and helping her to have a better quality of life. Did you hear how she's walking a lot easier? You know, so many of us that take for granted that we walk or we work out or we do boot camp, but we take it for granted for those small things like being able to walk without pain. That was monumental for LaShawn. And so we want to absolutely help others understand how CBD can help to be a holistic, organic way of being well. Is lupus hereditary? Well, what I find in a lot of families is that autoimmune disorders, once you find a family member with an autoimmune disorder, you see it run in the family. For instance, my cousin has lupus. Her son has Hashimoto thyroiditis. So it may not be the same exact autoimmune condition, but there is a tendency in families to have different sort of autoimmune disorders. So thank you for that question, Cindy. Any other questions before we let you all go? You've been amazing. You've stayed in there more than an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, we thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rita. My mom has a form of rheumatoid arthritis and she was so grateful to hear from you and LaShawn. Thank you so much, Michelle, for that feedback. Uh, we're hoping that it's been very helpful. The recording will be posted on our Facebook page. We want you, if you're not on our Wakana Facebook page, we want to invite you to that Facebook page. You can do that by asking to join. It's Wakana for Life. You can ask the person that invited you to get you set up. If there's no other questions, we can I say one thing? Yes, you can say one thing, LaShawn. I'm going to unmute you here. She wants to say something. Let's see if I can find you. 
Are you unmuted, LaShawn? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you so much for having me. I did want to just address or just make a little statement. Uh, I have a colleague who is on the line and we had a conversation a couple days ago. She's uh, involved with Wakana as well. And with um, speaking with people about the product and the issue of cost came up for a concern for some people. So I um, just had an explanation that went something like this, you know, in this time and age, a lot of jobs don't even offer, some jobs don't even offer paid time off. And then others offer it where it's all lumped in together, not separate for sick time and paid time off, it's all lumped into one. But me as a nurse, I have it lumped into one, PTO, paid time off, doesn't matter if it's vacation or sick. So a lupus flare could tentatively render you out for three, four weeks. And that's, less time you have for vacation. And then if you run out of that and exhaust that, then you're off with no pay. So if you take the amount of, and let's just say you made $15 an hour, $20 an hour, $12 an hour, whatever it is, take that amount times a day of work and compare it to the price of that tincture or that power mango or those gummies and then do the math. And I just want to leave people with that thought. Thank you so much, Tom. Our products are very affordable. Um, and I'm telling you, just when you, when you talked about how you're walking, that just brought such... <laughs> Greg that just said, brought such you can go to the park. Yeah. <laughs> yes, go to the park. <laughs> when I hear stories like that, it touches my heart because as a physician... You know, I understand that there is a place and need for pharmaceuticals. Don't get me wrong, anyone on this line. But when you take a natural plant, an herb, and you give it to someone, the quality of life has now improved because of this natural occurring substance that God blessed us with it. It, it, it just almost brings tears to my eyes. So I just want to thank you, LaShawn, again for sharing with us all of your knowledge, your testimony, your your ability to really, you know, impact the lupus society and beyond. So thank you. Good night, everyone. We'll have the recording for you to share with your friends, your family members, your colleagues who couldn't make tonight. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Have a great evening. Thank you.